Hi, everybody. Hello. How are you doing? Excellent. Thank you so much for coming out. My name is Jarrett Weisselman. I'm the editorial director for ET Online. Crazy excited to be here tonight. Love the show and love the actress we'll be chatting with tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Anna Klumsky. Ooh. Fancy. Fancy. Ooh, okay. 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 Good? Yeah, I think so. Excellent. Um, so obviously we're all here to talk about Veep, but because I am curious, I would love to maybe just go back a little bit before we look forward and find out how you got started acting. <laughs> um, well, okay. My, when I was a baby, my mother worked for Eastern Airlines. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, really? Oh my God, Wait, do, okay, that's awesome. <laughs> um, she was a reservationist, so there were a lot of, uh, uh, it, was, it was like uh, a place where a lot of women worked and so they all brought their, um, their kids and it was really friendly to, to women with kids. And, um, and there was a, another woman there who had her girls in modeling. And so she, my mom was a single mom and always looking for some kind of extra <laughs> income, I think. And so this, uh, this woman suggested uh, that my mom get me into modeling at, uh, at, at baby age. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's what she did. So my, my first modeling gig was for Carson Peary Scott ad uh, in the Sun Times, and I was 10 months old. And that's how then I started to get commercials as a baby, and then they start to put you on to auditions for a bunch of things. That's how I got into the business, mm -hmm. but I, I also at one point just asked my mom, I'd like to try out for musicals, because I was very into musicals. And so when I was eight years old, I tried out for a dinner theater production of Annie, and so that was really my first, like when I kind of wanted to do it. Um, yeah, so that's that's how it started. That's how I started. I mean, don't leave us hanging. How did it go? Did you book the role of Annie? <laughs> no, not Annie. Uh, Molly. Okay. And <clears throat> excuse me, I am getting over a cough, which is sucks. Um, and then I played Tessie in another one, in another production of Annie. So never Annie, but always orphan. You're. <laughs> I like that. Um, obviously, <laughs> you've done a lot of film work, but you've always really stayed true to the stage as well. Yeah. I mean, was that a love that you found through doing early theater? Or was it something that developed after you had done film work? I think I, I think it certainly is something that I, f I fell in love with doing theater. It was it was something that um, I always. I always felt good being a show person, you know, being with the company and and uh, they were always a surrogate family to me, whoever I was in a show with. And that remains to this day, really, um, if you're lucky enough to work with a cast that, that you could feel that way. <laughs> Sometimes it's just work. <laughs> Sometimes you're like, I sign my name. And I'm going. But, um, but yeah, and then as an adult, theater is really what brought me back into the business because I really, I really feel like I wouldn't, I, I eventually would have come back from some inspiration, but the way it unfolded for me was when I was in New York and I, and I thought I was done with acting, I, I saw um, The Goat or Who is Sylvia by Edward Albee and Mercedes Rule just, just made me really, really, I, I even said it out loud, I said, I have to do that. And two years late, I mean, I let two years go by without even trying, because I was so scared to get back into it. But really, that was the impetus. And so being in New York, having those kinds of inspirations, it, it, it matters so much to me that, that that's the, the communication that spoke to me so much to, to get me back into it even, so. How did you find the industry coming back? Because you'd obviously had success with My Girl and other films when you were younger, taking time out to go to school. Sure. Was it hard to jump back in? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was hard mentally for me because because I I really thought I was done, yeah. and so it was the jump of admitting that maybe I still wanted to, that maybe I was wrong, that maybe um, you know I needed to to take those risks. That was the big risk for me. That was I had a nine to five job. I had health insurance. I had you know, um, and to go into the bosses that, you know, and be like, um, I'm gonna, 
I'm going to stop this now and go and train for acting again when I told you that I was totally not going to do that. You know, that was, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm prideful. I'm, you know, so uh, that was the hardest part of it. Um, it. Technically, the hardest part is obviously not knowing where your auditions are coming from, not knowing, you know, I, I didn't have a paid gig for like a year and um, even though I was doing free theater, uh, which, which was such a great training ground as well. You know, those are technically the hard things, but but mentally, I knew that I was supposed to do it, uh, no matter what. I just the, the second I started again in uh, in acting class, it was like that day. I was like, oh yeah, I'm not I'm not just giving this a year. Like I'm giving this ever for, because I I love it. So let's talk a little bit more about that. I'm curious what kind of classes and training you did, sort of when you decided to reinvest yourself. Had there been any? acting classes during the collegiate experience or was it all after? I didn't do any classes in school because I was totally still in that in that kid realm of oh you're a natural or you're not. I, I and that's something that I was taught as a kid which is just it's just it's bunk and um, you know kids are all naturals unless they're unless they're in class unfortunately <laughs> you know I, I always tell people don't put your kids in class because just they're they're gonna lose that thing um, but you know and, and everybody says out of the mouths of babes right because they're so truthful so it's like that you know if, if our job is to tell, tell the truth then that's why kids are, are so good at that um, so I thought you know I thought oh well I just say the lines and they come out right so man I don't have to do it and uh, and then I did do university theater, though. I did like a production of Nine. I did Into the Woods because they're fun, and I wanted to do them. But I definitely thought, oh, you know, I don't have to do those vocal exercises that those people are doing. I, that was that was college. Um, and then when I was away from it for for those few years and came back to it, I I did realize with with really good advice from my my agent too um, at that time. Um, I needed to get training and learn how to be a kid again because I, I wasn't good anymore. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing, you know. I didn't have anything to, to, to any technique to fall on and, um, or to use. I just kind of thought I could wing it and it would be as good as when I was a kid. And, you know, it wasn't because you're an adult now. And um, so, that's, so that was uh, what I learned. And I, and I went to the Atlantic, which is David Mamet and um, Bill Macy's school. In Chelsea, and I did like a boot camp. It was like a six-week intensive, just because I'm impatient. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, some people go and get their MFA, and I think that's amazing. And and part of me still goes like, oh, should I just like try Juilliard or Yale or whatever? But I'm so happy I did it this way, just because because here we are. Um, so I did that intensive, and I and I just ate it up, and I loved it, and I still do my vocal exercises every day. <laughs> I did them before I came here, even though I have this cough. <laughs> and um, yeah, so so training was really important. In terms of what you learned there, <clears throat> what did you sort of feel was either the best piece of advice or the one you put to use the most often? Hmm. Well, there was like career advice, and then there's like craft advice, but career. I still do this all the time, is um, Neil Pepe, who is one of the artists, he's the artistic director now, I think, I don't, I forget what, he still directs a lot of their, their plays, um, did like a talk about, you know, working uh, in the business. And he said, if you can do three things a day for your career, then you're ahead, like you're already ahead. Like, cause right, it's all about what's in your control and what's not, and there's so much not in our control. So. And you have to embrace that. So in order to kind of ground yourself, you need to identify the things that are in your control, even if they're tiny. Like for me, that's that was one of my things, like vocal exercise. That was something I did today for my career. You know, maybe watching a movie and paying attention or seeing a play. Um, you know, did I look at backstage and submit myself for things? Did I, you know, all those little things that I could just kind of check off. And, and I was always so proud of myself if I could even do more than three, you know? Um, and I still have like a list like that where I, I mean, I really, today I even, you know, you scratch out things and you hope that you get three done. So <laughs> that was that was the career advice that I still take with me. I love it. Thanks. And then around 2007, 2008, after a string of TV appearances and films, there was a movie called In The Loop, ah! that you were a part of, amazing film. Love it. Uh, how did you, how did that role come to you? That was an audition. I, um, 
I was doing a show at the Labyrinth um, at the Public Theater, and it was a really, it was it, it was such a, a, a gratifying show because it was like really, really balls to the wall, you know, crying your eyes out every single night, like you're a mess every night. You know, it was one of those where it's like that masochistic fun that actors like, <laughs> where we're like, yeah, I'm like, I'm feeling, you know. And uh, <laughs> and it was, I mean, it was really like, it was a really, um, it was a crazy show. Like, you know, my character had to like smoke meth and do S&M and like, you know, and cr like cry over her murdered boyfriend and like all these crazy, I mean, it was insane. It was, it was the lab, that's what they do. And um, so it was, it was dark and I, I was happy doing that. But this audition came along that was, you know, it was like, okay, so it's like a British comedy about, you know, I don't even know what they said it was about, the State Department, and I was like, ah, oh, that's fun, you know, considering that I studied international relations. And it's cold reading, like nothing, you can't prepare. So, because that's arm style, that's um, Armando Unici's, uh, uh, that's, that's his deal. And so I was like, fine, like game, because it, it's one of those things when, when you have to do like a cold read and, and you already have a play, you're not like freaking out about having a job. Um, at that moment, um, you know, you really get to be present because you're just like, I'm just going to do this for 10 minutes, see what happens. It's like practice. It's almost, you know, being, you know, being an actor, I always say that about auditions, is like, that's your 10 minutes to perform. You have no idea what's going to happen next, but that's your, that's your time. So that's what it happened. I, I was just totally open, did this cold read, had fun with it, and, and Arm liked it. So <laughs> he had me... Uh, he had me come back and do the same thing with Zach Woods, who I believe everyone just got to see in this episode, um, where we played, uh, we played enemies and in the loop. We don't, we don't, we don't, we're not friendly to each other <laughs> as we are in this episode. So, um, so then we read together and read with some other folks too and paired us together and it was, it was flying from there. In general, do you enjoy the audition process? I do, I do. I, um, you know, there's certain seasons <laughs> where you don't, like pilot season can be insane. Mm -hmm. um, but still, I, I, always, I always like acting more than I like not acting. So when you have lots of auditions, it's, it's awesome because you get to play all these different people and, and maybe even three within a day, <laughs> which is a great thing. Um, yeah, I, 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 I definitely, you know, there, there are times when you've gone on so many where you're just like, okay. Like, when is, when, you know, can we not do this Groundhog Day thing? Um, I've done this now. Like, what's up? But, uh, but it takes me a while to get to that point. Like, I, I, I do. I just, I prefer to act <laughs> than not. Yeah. Obviously, Armando is an amazing writer, but yeah. one of the things that people feel re is really special about his work is that there's such room for improvisation mm -hmm. in moments. Talk a little bit about <clears throat> the process of filming in the loop and sort of, how you adapted to that style? We um, we had four days of rehearsal. The Brits had a few more, um, and some of the some of the it, for those have, who haven't seen in the loop, it's kind of like there's a British cast and an American cast, and we kind of all converge and and uh, do a beat it video, um, but uh, <laughs> not really. But and we. So, so the you know a lot of the Brits already were on thick of it, so they kind of knew the process. That's the show that they had um, running for four seasons, and so the Americans, you know, they we did four days of rehearsal in New York. And rehearsal, when we call we do this for Veep too, when we call it rehearsal, it's really workshop. It's not it, it, we're we're not you know really like blocking anything. We're not it's it's not figuring stuff out or moments or anything. It's it's us getting around, doing a reading of whatever draft we have, and then we get on our feet and arm or the director or, or maybe some of the actors throw out suggestions of what could happen to these characters. So that's like the most improvisation that happens. Um, I'm not improv trained, so it's not really about writing anything or coming up with funny st stuff, you know, which is an amazing craft and I, 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 admire, I admire those who can do that. Um, but this is really within the story. You already know the character you're playing. You already pretty much know the day they're having. Um, it's really just for Arm and whoever and all the other writers to 
to play and see what things they might they feel they might be missing. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of opportunities in that. A lot of what we come up in, with in the workshops do end up in in either the movie or the episodes. And yeah, so it's um, that's that's how we do it. I mean, is it? An, it seems like it's a process you've come to enjoy very much. Yeah, I love it. I I love it. I'm I'm the type of actor who I show up with a lot of choices already. I, you know, you can trust that I've read the script. You don't have to be like, okay, so this is her dad's funeral. You're like, yeah, I know, I read it. Um, you know, I, sorry, <laughs> it's like my favorite kind of director is someone who tells you what's going on. And you're like, I, yes, you can, I can you can assume I read it last yeah. night and I learned the line. Um, <laughs> what would you like? <laughs> like, anyway, um, so, you know, so. That said, I, you know, when, when arm directs or, or anybody in this process directs, they really l trust you to have done that and trust you to know what's going on. And so, you know, as a result, it's not about like, okay, I need you to, you know, I really need this result from you. I really need this result from you. It's like, they'll let you just play and they know what to keep. I, um, and so it just really gels with the way I act. Some actors really like kind of like a score, like a musical score, like what would you like from this? What would you like from that? Was that okay? That you know that that kind of stuff, um, and that's great. But it's just not my personality. I'm 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 much happier just kind of doing what I feel like is right, tweaking it with the director, and then doing it again. Um, so so yeah, do we, it be, having that kind of freedom really really speaks to the way I work. Is it difficult to go from something like that kind of process to something like, say, Hannibal, where I'm sure it's very choreographed and very yeah. as it is in the script? <laughs> it, there's always there's always a, uh, a a learning curve for me once I, once I get off of of Veep <laughs> and I go to something else. I always have to remind myself, oh yeah, that's right. There's like there's marks and there's <laughs> and there's like yeah. I always have to and, and you know what? I think that that's some part of what's so great about being able to do that is. Because you do, you need to, you need to, you know, grease the wheels, you know, and, and remind yourself of that. Like you, that's why I, I do, I love doing film and stage and TV as well, because there are, there's, you, you use different skills for all of things. And, and, um, and I, I just like being as balanced as I can when it comes to those skills. So it's like, okay, if, if I start to feel like I've been, uh, I've been too, uh, too unhinged with like the V process, then it's like, okay, maybe I need to get into, you know, let's do a play and, 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 you know, have our blocking and have our staging and do it eight shows a week and, you know. Through either of the processes, be it uh, in the loop or Veep, did you find one particular piece of advice that was the most helpful to the improv process? Mm, oh gosh, yes. Well, one is, is we don't, he always tells, it reminds us, you don't have to be funny. Like, don't worry about it. And that's true. Our writers are brilliant. We don't, like, aside from maybe Matt and Zach Woods and, and Tim, um, I'm not going to come up with something better one, than what they came up with. So, like, let's just, you know. He says, uh, don't worry about being funny. And, he, and the big one, listen. He always, you know, just remind, you got you to gotta remind people every once in a while to listen. Because we are. We're, like, kind of, you know, we're trying to get our point across or our intention across. And, and it's... Um, it's 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 best when when you remember to to have the give and take. So with the in the loop process, I mean, I don't want to assume, but I'm guessing the V process was a little more easy to audition for, given the fact it was the same writer director. Yeah, I actually really easy because I actually did an audition for V. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I I I it's um. It, it, everyone in this room will know that's like the holy grail when you don't have to audition. <laughs> and uh, and I still get embarrassed saying that in public. I don't know why. Um, because I do. I like feel like I'm going to wake up and it wasn't like, and I'll like, you know, it'll be November of like 2010 and I'll be like, meh, I don't have a job. <laughs> um, <and> I, so <laughs> um, it's, uh, but yeah, I, they, uh, Arm actually um, thought of me for Amy and um, and that was just, the, it's, it's such a beautiful gift because I, I actually, there was a, there's a story where I was, I was kind of in despair, just like, you know, we, we have those days and I think I, I wrote like a journal entry. Yeah, I was in a journal somewhere and I was just, oh, my life, blah, blah, blah. And you know, things are great, but I'm sad. And, um, and I'm just, <laughs> this is my journal voice, I guess. And, <laughs> 
But I, I, this is, I'm, I'm reading this, you know, uh, after I already was doing the pilot for Veep. I was on the pilot for Veep reading this journal entry, and it says, can't I please just work with Armando Iannucci again? And that's what it said. And I had no idea that this was coming down the pipe. I had no idea he was thinking of this. I hadn't, I hadn't really been in close touch with him for a while. And, you know, so it was, it, that's how deeply I wanted to work with him again, because I was just like, that's just going to make me feel creatively fulfilled right now. That's what I need. And, uh, and then, yeah, to, to realize that, they want to work with you too, <laughs> like <laughs> again, is um, it's just the, it's delicious. It's the it's the best thing. I I love it. <laughs> Did he consult with you about building the character of Amy, sort of knowing that you were the person he wanted for the role, or do you think in the loop helped shaped his vision of her? I think it was more just knowing me, knowing the way I worked, knowing I, he wanted to work with me again. It, when they wrote the character he hadn't consulted me before. Um, but once you're cast, like once you're in and the, the dotted line is signed and all, then, I mean, all of us, he's, he um, is really good about, about asking us what we know. And, and again, I, I love that. I find that's, you know, a director has all of the characters to think about. A writer has all the characters to think about, which is, which is huge. I mean, that's, you know, they're very responsible for those characters and their stories. However, an actor has one character to think about and think about it a lot. So we're kind of the expert. <laughs> we or we become, the, you know, we become the expert. We're um, that's our job. That's what we're paid to be. So I, uh, I always, you know, I'm not a big. I'm not, a, I'm not someone who has to like tell everybody the backstory. I don't have to be like, okay, so since she went to college here, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't, but, um, you know, because I do believe that like what's in the scene is in the scene and, uh, and it speaks for itself. However, in a series especially, or like if you're on a new play um, where the writer is there, it is, it's always great when the writer consults you about this character that you're thinking about all the time, so. Do you create backstories for your characters even if they're not on the page? I do, I don't like have a worksheet or anything. I'm not like, you know, there's some schools that teach you that, I, I don't do that. Um, I just, I, I jot down notes for anything that I think will be helpful in making a choice. So, you know, it, it's, it, it can be anything from, it's just stuff that I think of that I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, that, that'll help me, you know, think of an external of hers, or I'll, you know, that'll help me think of, or, or grab at something when I'm kind of swimming in the, in the deep, you know, then I'll be like, oh, there's this, you know, this thing that I thought of. It also helps on a series. It's kind of great when the, the art direction comes up to you and is like, so is this college mug okay? And you're like, well, she didn't go to Penn State. She went to Penn, so. Um, <laughs> and I totally did that. <laughs> I was, I was a little specific to just and be theorizing. Nowhere, nowhere in the show do, is it written that Amy <laughs> went to Penn, but in my head she did, and so I told the art director, like, yeah, like, fine, give her, you know, give her a pen in Yale Law, and, like, they gave me a little Yale Law thing. Who knows? I'm sure the writers didn't even know, because really, there's a, there was all first season, and still second season, there's a picture of, like, Amy, no, there's a picture of two men, like an older gentleman and then a younger gentleman. And I always thought in first season, I'm like, oh, well, that's her brother and her dad. There we go. And now, <laughs> now we have like a dad who looks not like the person on her desk. And we have a sister. So I, you know, it's, 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 it it's, people, it's all up for grabs. It was just the people who came with the frame. Yeah. <laughs> but no, but it's, that's... It's some prop person's family. I have no <laughs> idea. But that actually leads me into my next question. Because one of the things I always find so fascinating when I talk to actors who work on episodic television is that the process forces them to be so fluid in their choices oh, because yeah. you never know what the writer's going to bring in in season three or in season four. I mean, totally. has it been interesting to sort of not commit to anything too strongly because of that? Yeah, and that's, and, and that's also, I mean, it's something I'm learning still um, because, you know, committing is like the, is the thing, right? That's what we do. And, um, and, and that's, again, why I, I, I do say what I say about, like, yeah, I play with backstory, but I don't need to talk about it. I don't need to g get anybody into it. You know, what's on the page is on the page. That's what we know. What we commit to is the scene. What I commit to is what I want from that other person in the scene. And that's what we've got. Like, that's what's going to end up being filmed. That's what I've got. So, yeah, everything else is, you know, very flexible. And... Um, and that's, I mean, it's, it's why it's such a cool job. Like you just, you know, you have to be like so strong and then like also just, you know, really limber. <laughs> so um, it's neat. And, uh, and, and also 
I've discovered that with process as well. I mean, we it's just like, you know, because we all have like our things that we do, the technique that we rely on, and some things are non-negotiable. Like I will always wonder, what does she want in this scene? Like that will always happen. But whether or not I get to write that down, whether or not I get to put it in my notebook right away, or if I have to just do it because we heard about that scene this morning, um, that changes. Everything, I, I've, I've had to adapt that like so many times. And then when I work on another project, go back to the old thing and, and that's, I, I've got to believe that just makes you better at what you do because it, it feels that way. You feel like, oh, I don't want to adapt. Like, like you get, I always get pissed first. I'm like, no, this is the way I work. I want to work this way. And then once I feel that, then I'm like, okay, <laughs> it's time again. <laughs> it's time to, to, you know, go with the flow. You got to do this scene no matter how much prep you've had, no matter how little prep you've had. And you got to make it happen. So yeah, it, it's, it's got to make you better. And I would imagine the people you're surrounded with in terms of actors has to also help the process. You know, you, if you feel comfortable with them, if you gel with them, mm -hmm. was there any sort of chemistry, sort of team building at the outset of the show? You know, not on purpose. Um, I've had, <laughs> I've worked on shows, <laughs> that, that dar really dark show that I, that I mentioned. We used to start rehearsal every day with playing like some, some imagined uh, version of of volleyball that the director had invented it, it, just like for team building <laughs> um, you know like we, we didn't really have to everyone kind of just I think because we do the workshops it's like that in itself mm -hmm. is very um, you know I guess chemistry building in a way I mean that's what's neat is this is our profession so it's like you do go to work and it is still work and it's really gratifying work and they're amazing people so you have great colleagues you know but it's um but you're when you show up you're still showing up to to do work and to get it done and i love that like i you know i don't think that it needs to be you know all beers like it, it you know let's let's work on the on the show um, the everyone on the show obviously works in service of the Veep, played by Julie Louis Dreyfus, yeah. one of the most accomplished, I think, comedians on television ever. Um, talk to me a little bit about what you've gleaned from her process through this experience. Mm, well, she's I mean, it, one. I mean, the one thing I always think of when I think of Julia is is it's possible. Like she like. All the things that you wake up and you go, oh my gosh, can I really get this done and that and this? You know, I have all these things to do on my to-do list or whatever, you know, or even life things like, you know, like, like I'm gonna have a baby and I'm gonna act and I'm gonna do, and she's she does that. Like she does it every day and she does it in an exemplary fashion. Um, she's, so so it just kind of takes them the, the mystery and the anxiety out of it because I get to watch this woman accomplish it all day, every day. Because um, she does, she's a producer on our show and she really wears that hat seriously as well as, as acting as the lead. I mean, she's the sh you know first to show up, last to leave. And, um, and she'll never, it, it never, she never seems worse for the wear. Um, yeah, she, that's, that's how, she's inspired me as a person even you know and 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 acting wise she's very precise um you know she definitely likes you know she loves to beat her things you know beat things out and know where these are coming from and and then when the camera's on it's it comes so naturally to her it just you know it's not um it never ever seems like like she gave it as much thought as she did you know what i mean um and that's that's her magic because she's she's just so sharp that um, that yeah once once action is yelled it's like it it it's it feel it's absolutely spontaneous so she's she's done that thing where she can marry the sharpness of her mind with her spontaneity and that's I think uh, what we what we're always uh, trying to achieve as actors. How important is it? to have someone in that lead role who sets a tone on the set in terms of professionalism and the way you treat other people. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's very important. I mean, and she, uh, I've been lucky enough not to really have worked with any divas necessarily. You know, I, I've, um, you know, Yuan is a, a wonderful actress and she, she was uh, on that show and she mentioned that, you know, as the lead does set the tone and, you know, if uh, if your lead is 
maybe giving in too much, then then you know everybody will expect, you know, every you know they'll expect you to get you know to get away with anything. Like the producers get away with anything. And if your leader, um, if your lead does not um, give an inch or whatever, then that's you know, it 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 really is kind of the mouthpiece for the rest of the cast and for the crew. And I never really thought of it from a professional sense that way. That like yes, this is a workplace and the lead is a is a it does matter it does matter that everybody's watching that person and how they behave on set so yeah it reminded me that whenever that ends up happening for me that i that it'll you know you got to be an example like you do and you have to you have to be awesome as you know i think it's very true obviously the show is awesome you guys probably got the ultimate seal of approval when you found out that joe biden is a huge fan of how Veep. crazy was that um, <laughs> What? That's a great example of Julia being uh, being a, a terrific leader too. She she stopped production for a second and and put her put that message, the voicemail that he left her on speaker and played it for the whole crew. You know that wasn't just for like her and like oh her buddy or something like that was like the whole crew got to hear that like with the second she got it. So that's yeah very cool. What does having something like that happen where, you know, the Vice President of the United States calls and compliments your show, um, what does that do to you guys as a cast and as a crew and as creators? I mean, does it embolden you to continue getting bigger and better? It, totally. It's, it's, it's a really, it's, a, it's definitely a validation. And, and Arm 2 being not from this country, I think, he's, he's never been shy about saying that what matters most to him. I mean, he you know wants to. He wants everyone to enjoy it or whatever, you know get something out of it. But, but that the people he's actually writing about are are connecting to it. It's everything to him. So, um, you know that it is. It's 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 just validation. It's great. Because now the show is actually filmed in and around Washington D.C. and in the Mar yeah, yeah the Maryland area. I mean, is it? an odd experience to be doing sort of the Capitol Hill scenes and then have actual politicians mulling around and they're like, oh, you're filming Veep, I like that show. <laughs> it's, um, you know, I think it was weird the first few visits we had, like, I mean, it would be, I mean, it would be, it would definitely be, like, leave a mark if Biden came on set or something. Um, but, but m more often what we'll have is, uh, is, folks from someone's staff or something just like pop by and say hi or you know because they know somebody or you know they have a crew member who's a friend or a sister that and um and and that's really cool when i found when i got freaked out was when ron Klain uh came to set he uh was the the chief of staff for both Vi uh, biden and for gore and i i read a lot about him <laughs> back when i was um finding out what a chief of staff was all about and uh, and and he actually did a, a piece, I think it was GQ.com, that actually spoke about how Amy's really subpar as a chief of staff. <laughs> and that like taught me so much about removing myself from the character because I was like, mm, like no, they, like but they they wrote that, they made her do that, you know. And I was like, Anna, like that's why it's comedy because like no one can be perfect. Um, you know, I'm like, I knew she shouldn't have done that, you know, <laughs> like even Ron Klain says. And he, so then he shows up on set and I was like, oh, oh my God, you know, so that was, that was really, really a cool day. And I, um, I, I just, gosh, I inundated him with questions and, um, but uh, yeah, it, it's, it, it, it's neat. It's, it's neat, but I think we kind of are, um, are because we play these people who are like be in this industry, I think, we feel less removed from them when we meet them. You know what I mean? When I meet a politician or I meet a staffer now, I'm like, I kind of feel like a, a kinship, even though they're actually doing this job and I don't know how they do that job. I mean, so. obviously, as we've said and he said, it is comedy, so it's not going for accuracy. Right. But in terms of your preparation, when you, at the outset of the show, what was important to you in terms of building her professional foundation as a character? Oh, I mean, it's... It, it, when we say not going for accuracy, I think it's you know the farce of the of the the plots and things and and how we behave. It's heightened, you know, and and it is farce. But we 
I think in the only way, and this is the, this is definitely how all of our creators uh, think, the only way that that satire and that farce can work is if we get everything else as accurate as possible. Um, and so that's you know that's everybody's commitment when we, everybody, the crew, um, the writers, the cast, everybody who's involved, like that's the the always our goal is to is to try to get this as feasible as possible. And that's why our I mean our set is like. I, I think it's deliciously hysterical because it really looks like the EEOB, where you know you've got these amazing, amazing walls and 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 moldings and beautiful things, and then you have these like crap computers and like a desk that doesn't match its chair and like you know, and that's how it is. Like that's totally how it is. It's uh, you know, it's a government budget, and um, and this is the way you know this is the way people work and and. Uh, and people love that in DC too. They're like, "Oh, you so got that." You know, you get the look right. You get that, and that's, and that's, I think, what can why the the comedy can be uh, meaningful even to to especially those who work in those jobs because it's like, wait, that really feels like my life right now. You know, <laughs> so yeah. Um, a lot of actors will often say that they sort of get to try out a bunch of professions through acting. You know, when they a carpenter, they learn carpentry, and it sort of makes you yeah. a jack of all trades to some degree. <laughs> Weren't acting, what job would you like to be doing? Uh, it's, I, I, I've heard this question and I've been posed that question before and it's so hard to say because it's true, I really love my job, like I love it. And also I was away from it and pursued other things th thinking I'd like it better and I, and I don't. So it's, you know, this, this is what I would love to do. I think, you know, if acting didn't exist, that's the only way I can like imagine sure. answering that question. Um, if, if acting didn't exist, I would hope that it would have something to do with, uh, with like riding a horse or, <laughs> 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 or uh, you know, I, I think, uh, yeah, I, 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 every once in a while I wonder what would have happened if I kept playing my clarinet as like, as uh, uh, committedly as all the other things I've done. So yeah, I don't know, maybe maybe playing in an orchestra. So if there's any scripts out there for like a musical equestrian, uh, you're on it. Me. It's happening. Me, me. <laughs> well, I should definitely not play a clarinet while riding a horse. No, maybe not simultaneously. <laughs> yeah. That just seems dangerous. Oh, so dangerous. That just seems dangerous. All right, and uh, finally, one last question from the audience. Uh, what is the one thing you now know about acting that you wish you did when you first started? <sighs> um, that it's not about people liking you. I, it's, it's not a popularity contest. I mean, I know that the career can be because it's about who's seeing you and you wanna get hired and, but actual acting is about telling a story truthfully and that has nothing to do with whether people like you and it has nothing to do with whether you get a laugh um, or a result that maybe someone told you you should be getting like if you are playing the truth at that moment then then you're doing your job and that's that yeah it would have been nice to know those things I think <laughs> as, as a kid maybe I love it well listen thank you so much for being here today thank all of you so much for thank coming you out so thank much you for listening <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I love you.